I'm sitting here with Matt from Google, and you're one of the companies that stand for innovation. And actually, it's interesting because in Germany, we have a big discussion about if Germany is still innovative. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell me what are the things that are necessary to be innovative from the perspective of Google? Well, thank you for asking me. Um, so my day job at Google is I look after all of the things we do across Africa, the Middle East and, and Europe. So I get to see lots of different countries and how they're operating. Uh, and as a, a Brit and a European, I've always had tremendous respect for Germany, you know, the world champion of export, such incredible industries. But you're also right, there's a moment of, of real acceleration in innovation. Um, we've had the coming of the internet, uh, then the entire internet in your pocket with the mobile revolution, and now we're in this acceleration of AI, this sort of sudden set of breakthroughs that's providing us with intelligent tools. So um, there's a good question to ask yourself as a country and as an individual, you know, what do I need to do to succeed in the future? And I think there are a few ingredients, right? You need um, the education system that produces people who can do R&D. Really, really important. There's a huge amount of um, opportunity to apply AI in an array of different fields, you know, in health, uh, in climate science, in energy, in manufacturing. So you need uh, the talent to be able to harness those opportunities. Second, I think you need some ambition. You need to be outward looking. You need to be positive about innovation and looking for how to harness it. Sometimes I find in Europe, you know, the debate about innovation starts with regulation rather than opportunity. And I think sometimes that can slow us down a little bit. How do we protect, you know, what we have from this thing that's coming versus how do we seize this thing that's coming and use it to make everything that we do better. So that's a really important moment, I think, across Europe right now. You, you said something very interesting because you said, oh, you have to be open and maybe a little bit ambitious for innovation. Mm. And like you already said, maybe sometimes in Europe, maybe especially in Germany, we're not that ambitious anymore. Do you think that has something to do with the wealth that we have? Or how does it come as a, that a country gets less ambitious about innovation? Because I think there are other countries like Saudi Arabia, Africa, mm -hmm. countries that are really going for innovation and mm -hmm. maybe being brave to try new things. So what's the difference? I mean, I don't think I would be specific about Germany here. Uh, I think that, you know, what you think about in Europe is you've got mature, relatively wealthy countries with an aging population. And so you think about what you have to do as a political leader with one of those countries is you're really trying to protect what you have, which is a, a high quality of life and a high quality of living. And you're concerned about disruptive change. You know, I'm responsible for our operations in Africa. We have all 10 of the poorest 10 countries in the world in Africa. They are desperate to embrace the future. And so there's this nice phrase, I think, which we should think about, which is, are you trying to protect the past from the future or the future from the past? And, you know, we're sitting here in Berlin and there's a city, you know, divided and, and the scars of history are now healing across the city. And I think you've got those two dynamics in Europe. You see the Eastern European countries typically are looking to bring the future home to them. And maybe the Western European, older economies, the UK included, have got a comfortable life and they're more concerned about, about what's coming. And I think we have to embrace the future. It's a connected world. Good ideas can come from anywhere. And you can see how technology can transform lives for healthy older people just as much as uh, young people who are striving in, in a tough uh, developing country. At Google, if you are searching for innovative people for your team, how do you find out if a person is innovative? Because I think there are many rumors about testing at Google and there are movies in Hollywood that, uh, that give this image of very crazy interviewing sessions yeah. uh, with um, yeah, questions that really uh, bring you out of your comfort zone. Yes, yeah, so I don't believe everything you read in the media. <laughs> um, but uh, I think, I mean, the first thing to say is that Google, our mission is to organize the world's information and make it accessible and useful for everyone. And if we want our products to work for everyone, they need to be built by everyone. So one of the key challenges for us in the technology industry, and Google's no exception, is to really make sure that we represent everyone. So we strive, you know, there's a, a well-known fact around um, women in engineering, science, technology, engineering, and maths, kind of low representation. So we're working really hard to improve the gender mix in our product teams, but also culturally. So I'm really proud of the fact we've got two and a half thousand people working for Google Germany uh, right now. Most of them are German. And um, 
since I've been at Google 17 years, we've built our operations in so many countries here, reflecting those countries as well as possible. So, you know, the first thing is to make sure you've got a diverse team of people who are building products for everyone and that they're built by everyone. That's really important to us. And then you are looking for curiosity, creativity, collaboration, people who want to collaborate and solve problems and are curious about how to do that. And maybe one more question about this topic, because do you think it's able to train people to be more innovative? And maybe, probably, you're doing it at Google. What are the techniques you're using for that? Yeah, so one of the things we did when I started in this role about eight years ago was we, we looked at digital skills. And we found that um, there were many jobs that, that people thought were not going to get filled because there was a lack of skills. And that people were concerned that digital technology was too complicated for them. And since then, we've trained 1.7 million Germans in digital skills, and we've found, and about 15 million Europeans, and we've found that um, actually it's a confidence thing. People, once they start to realize that it's not so difficult and there are ways they can use this and it can be helpful to their lives, people start to embrace them as well. So I think it's about giving people the confidence that it's for them. Okay, so I take out of this um, talk that you can train to be more innovative and probably you have to be open-minded and also brave. So uh, that really gives me a um, yeah, good feeling about the future because I think with education and with more uh, empowerment of technologies, we can have a really good future. And now you're already here. Olaf Scholz is coming by, so probably that's a good point to end the interview. Okay. And thank you so much uh, for taking your time and talking to me. Thanks for some great questions. Enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs>